Welcome to this Smart BI presentation on making reports. The aim of this video is to understand terms and measures, create a report, add graphs, filters and change the aesthetics of components on the reports. We also aim to add drill downs and contextual information that will help users interpret the data that they are looking at. Let's begin by defining the terms measures and dimensions. In Power BI, we have two different types of data. Measures are numerical, such as quantities and values. As a rule of thumb, if you can ask what the total value or average value of the data is, the data will be a measure. As an example, the total value of sales. Another would be the average value of shipments delivered on time. These are therefore both measures. Dimensions slice measures and are categories. The examples on the screen, period, product type and customer, can be used to slice measures. An example of putting these two together is below. The ordered value per representative, ordered value is a measure and representative is a dimension. Again, amount of measures produced per machine is another example of using measures and dimensions together. Let's have a look at an example. Consider we've been asked to produce graphs about our calendar year's sales intakes. For this, we'll be using the sales cube as this has the sales order values in it. Let's have a look at a graph that we might show. This graph here may answer the question, please tell me the spend of customers by customer group for this year. Let's have a look at how measures and dimensions are used to produce this graph. Along the y-axis we have a measure, ordered value. It is numerical and we can apply the terms total or average value to it. The dimension is the customer group, which allows us to slice the ordered value into different categories. One of the things you might not have first noticed is we have another dimension here. The dimension is our filter, and on this graph it is in this calendar year. This ensures that the graph doesn't display all the data that we have in our cube, but simply focuses on the year in hand. Let's go ahead now and open the Power BI platform and begin creating this graph. We are now in the Power BI web platform. To begin with, we need to create a new report. To do this, I'm going to click on Smart BI, click on Reports, and then click Create and create a new report. The data that we need for this is in the sales order intake cube. So I'm going to click this one and click create. This brings us up with a new blank canvas. What you may not have seen up to this point is the panels on the right hand side, which allow us to add visuals and fields to our report. The visuals here include bar charts, line charts, area graphs, and pie charts, although you can add many and even add more from the library that Microsoft holds. The fields are split up into measures and dimensions. The icon next to each of these items tells you whether it has measures or dimensions in it. As you can see, the first icon here has a calculator and therefore we know that this is a measure. The other items here have a table icon, and therefore these are dimensions. To create our graphs, we will need both measures and dimensions, as seen in our PowerPoint slide. To begin this, I'm going to add a bar chart. To do this, I'm going to click the bar chart, which will give us a placeholder that we can be begin building the graph that we showed in the PowerPoint slide. Next, 
we need to go and have a look for the measures and dimensions that we need to create this graph. To view the sales amount, we're going to have a look at the ordered value. The ordered value is a measure and therefore be under sales order intake with the calculator icon. In order to see all the measures, you may need to make this panel slightly wider. If we hover between the visualizations and the fields panels, our mouse changes and we can drag this to make it slightly bigger. Let's go ahead and find the ordered value in the sales intake. If we open up sales order, we can see that we have some categories that just help us find the measures that we're looking for. If we look under the ordered value, we will find the ordered value, which we can then drag and put into the value of this particular visualization. As you can see, the ordered value has now gone into this bar chart, but we have yet to segregate this or slice it into customer groups. To do that, we'll need a dimension, and the dimension we need will be customer group. This can be found in the customer under the groupings found here. Another way of finding a dimension or a measure is to use the search up at the top. In here, we can now type in customer group and we can see that Power BI has searched the fields that we have and found customer group. If we now drag this down onto the axis, you'll see that we've begun slicing our data into our different customer groups. Next, we can change the aesthetics of this graph. The aesthetics for any visual can be found by clicking the roller icon, which brings up the format panel. If we click on this, we can now see the ways that we can format our visual. If we now go down to data colors, we can now change the color so it can be a purple. As well as this, we may want to add data labels on it to show the values of each one of our bars. To do this, we can just click on the slider in order to change our data labels to on, and the data labels will appear above the graphs. The final thing to note with this is that at the moment the graph shows figures that are very high, and this is because we haven't yet filtered on a particular year. This means the graph is currently showing us all the data available in the cube. Let's go ahead and have a look at the filters. To do this, we'll click on the first icon, which will bring us through to the fields panel. Filters can be put in three levels. The first is a visual filter. This type of filter will filter just the visual we have selected. A page level filter will filter all of the graphs on this particular page or tab. If we want a filter to filter all of the pages on our report, we can add it to the report level filter. If you're not sure which one to use, we recommend that you use the largest, the report level filter. This will make sure that all of your pages display the same filters. In this particular example, we're going to look at the calendar year and therefore all of our metrics on all of our pages will be relating to the calendar year. To find this, we're going to have a look at the different metrics we have for dates. If we delete our search term and now go and have a look at the dates that we have, we can see we have three different dates that we can choose. We have the creation date, when the order was created, the order date, which is the first date that comes up in the sales order wizard. The third date we can choose is the shipment date, which shows when the order went out. Depending on which date we use depends on the end figures that we get out, so it is important to make sure that you select the correct date when creating your report. In this example, we're going to use the ordered date and we're going to add it as a report level filter so it filters everything 
on every page. If I go into the ordered date here, we can then see we have more options. If we go into general and select the date field, we'll be able to start filtering by date at report level. Rather than basic filtering, in this case, which allows us to select individual days, we want something that is more relevant to date fields. To do this, we're going to change filter type and go to relative date filtering, which is available for date fields as a special type of dimension. We're now going to ask Power BI for items in the last one calendar year. As such, in this field, we are going to set it to is in the last. We're going to type in one and drop down days to instead say calendar years. After we've done this, we can click apply filter and our graphs immediately change. A quick sense check over the data shows that this filter has been applied as we expect. If we now go and create another graph, we don't need to add this report level filter again. In this case, we're going to add a line graph. We're going to use this one here. And again, a placeholder is put in place. Again, our measure is going to be ordered value, which we can search for. And our axis is going to be year month. Again, we can choose from ordered, reporting date, shipment date, creation date. In this case, it seems sensible to continue using the order date, so we know and other users can easily understand the graphs that are on the page. We can drag this and put it into the axis. We've now created our second chart, a line chart. We can make as many of these charts as we like. Another example that people like to see is a horizontal bar chart or a cluster chart. If we now find the ordered value again, drag this down into the value and then pick customers We can now see that this graph shows our top customers by ordered value. At the moment, this scrolls all the way down. So instead of using a report level filter, we want a filter just on this visual, which shows the top 10 clients. To do this, we're going to have a look at our visual filters, and we can see that the two items that we've already got here customers and ordered value, our axis and our value on the graph, have already been added in automatically as filters. If we expand the customer visual level filter and select filtering type and choose top N, we can now show the top, we're going to show the top 10 customers and we're going to show that by ordered value. So we need to find our ordered value again and drag it in here. If we apply this filter, we'll now see that the scroll bar has disappeared and that it shows the top 10 customers. One thing that we may want to do is add another report level filter. The particular one that we're going to add today is one that filters out stock orders from our sales orders. The reason for this is that stock orders, which go into our warehouse, will then have sales orders made against them for shipping. This will give us double value within our figures. To do this, we're going to have a look at sales order invoice type. If we just type in type into the box, we can see that sales order intake type is now available. If we take this and drag it into the report level filters, we can now begin filtering. So we can add the sales order types and therefore the stock orders will now be excluded 
from all the graphs in this report. The next thing we're going to do is add a slicer in. We've deselected the graph that we had previously and we're now going to click on this slicer icon. This again brings in a placeholder where we can start putting in our dimension that we want to slice this data with. In this case I'm going to use the invoicing status. To do this we go up to the top, type in what we're looking for and we can drag it straight onto our slicer or into the field section as we desire. Again this brings in a filter that we can now start narrowing our data down with. If we click for example to invoice we can see that we've only got things to invoice from December 2017, Twio and this is in the other customer group. What we may want to do with this slicer though is change it so we can select multiple of the criteria within the slicer. To do this we go into the format tab then we can change the selection controls. If we need to expand the panel this can be done and we'll add the select all in order to allow us to select them all and we'll turn the single select off. This now allows us to click and check whichever boxes we want in order to make our report. The next skill that we're going to learn is adding a drill down and in this case we're going to add a drill down to the bar chart. To begin with I'm going to turn my slicer off to bring us back to our original position. It is important to remember that the state you save the slicer in is the state that the slicer will first come up when the graph is opened by you or your users. We're going to allow us to drill down into any of the customer groups to see the particular customers within it. To do this, the first thing we're going to do is select the bar chart. If we go back to the fields panel, we can see that we've got an axis of customer group. That is shown down at the bottom here. To add a drill down, we need to add another axis to our graph. And to do this, if we come up to the top and search for the dimension we're looking for, we can take the dimension and drag it into the axis. Now, if we right click on fruits, for example, we've got the option to drill down. If we click this, we can now see within the fruits category, Avam is the largest customer. Again, I want to make sure that my graph loads up with all my data by default. So I'm going to click the button up here, which will drill up and bring our graph back to its natural position. The final skill we're going to learn is how to add a tooltip. And in this case, we're going to add a tooltip to the horizontal bar chart. As well as the customer value, in this case, we are also interested in the shipped on time confirmed average. While we don't want to add this as an extra bar that shows visually, we do want to hover over the bar and have the confirmed average within the black tooltip which shows beside. To do this, we very simply go and search for the measure we're looking for, in this case the shipped in time, and we can now drag this down into the tooltip section. Now, when we hover over one of the bars, we get both the ordered value and the shipped in time confirmed average that we can see along by the side in order to get more contextual information. Before we finish this report, the final thing to ensure we do is save it so people can find it next time. To do this, we go to the File menu, click Save As and type in the report name that we want this report to save under. When we click save, this will go into our reports on the left hand side and be added to the workspace. If we've shared this workspace, this report will also be shared immediately as well. In conclusion, we have now created a report, we've added graphs, both bar and line charts, 
We've added measures and dimensions and discussed the differences between them. We've added filters to both the visual level and the report level, as well as discussing the page level filters. We've added a drill down, a tooltip and a slicer to our report. These cover the basic functions of the Power BI tool and allow you to create graphs without contacting your IT department. We hope you found this video useful.